The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. And by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at broadway-limited.com. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for June 2023. I'm your host, Ken Patterson. And this month, we've got a good show in that we start a new four-part series on building a new layout. And this layout measured about eight feet by three feet. And it originally started out as a simple run-by diorama, recreating an area on the Rio Grande Southern Railroad known as Dallas Divide. And I was copying the absolute best I could prototype photographs that I had in books and recreated the scene with very much accuracy. And then the layout then transformed and morphed into a more finished layout, complete with turntable industries, bridges, and beautiful scenery to run these wonderful models on. And so this is a new four-part series that we're starting building this wonderful layout. Also this month, we've got Matt Stern from Bachman Industries, who shares with us some of the newest and late great products that they have just introduced to the market. And also we look at a beautiful Broadway Limited K2 locomotive. This is in Chesapeake and Ohio. It's an absolutely beautiful model that we expose on the show this month. With that, let me say be sure to check out the What's Neat This Week video podcast that we shoot down here in the studio every Saturday night with guests, new models, exposing all the fun, neat things in the hobby every week. Be sure to check it out on YouTube. And with that, let's continue on with the rest of this June 2023 What's Neat. Hello, this is Michael Gross, and you're watching What's Neat with Ken Patterson. This video originally started out as a project for Joe Fugate, where we were simply gonna do a product review of a Blackstone C-19 steam locomotive and feature it in some still photography. What ended up being still photography turned into videography. What ended up being a simple run-by ended up turning into an elaborate scene with mountains and a run-by loop. The run-by loop layout, after the project was finished for the photography and the videography, ended up turning into an absolutely in-depth layout construction project. We cover every topic which can apply to every scale in the industry and the hobby, and that is wrapping the dioramas in oak, the electrical wiring, the top scenery, scratch building a turntable, doing the track work, understanding the topography, looking at the trees. We go in-depth and do a very detailed video coverage of the whole process of building this layout. So that's what you're essentially, that's what you are essentially about to watch. You're gonna watch me start out flying by the seat of my pants on a project, not even knowing where it was gonna go, only having one locomotive and not even any freight cars to begin with. And then at the end of the video, we're loaded with trains, a beautiful running layout, and an education that I'm sure you're gonna enjoy watching as you receive the entertaining knowledge that's gonna come through this video to you. So kick back, enjoy. This is a two hour, I don't know, over two hours long, this video. So enjoy this. This is my best work to date. Today's project involves the Rio Grande Southern C-19. This is a large scale version of a 36 inch C-19 locomotive from Bachman. The model we're gonna be featuring for this project 
is going to be a C19 and HO scale. So this is HO 36 inch narrow gauge from Blackstone. And my project is to get still photographs of this, which is easy enough, by simply using a foam diorama like you're accustomed to watching me do. And I'll line up the model. And I won't even use a few cars, maybe a box car and a caboose. I don't even have the freight cars yet when they get here. I'll use the freight cars on this scene. And here's an example of what that test shot looked like that I did just the other day. So I know this will work. But the problem with this photograph is it's freelanced. And the people that model the Rico Grand Southern, for lack of a better word, they're like a cult. So they know if it's right or it's wrong. And so for this project, I want to get it right. So the still photography, it may be freelanced, and it's going to look good just to get it done. But for the video on this project, I'm going to copy Dallas Divide. This is a photograph out of the Rio Grande Southern. I don't remember which volume. But this is Dallas Divide where uh, K27 number 455 had its wreck. So there's a lot of documented photographs of this scene in books. The fact is, what I need to do is I need to model the Colorado Rockies and simply model the 41 and a half inch length of cards that I need to get my run by. Now to do the video, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to model the 41 and a half inches on a foam scene, but I'm going to create a run back loop on the foam scene so that I can have continuous running for video. What that will do is eliminate the forwards and backwards and the time consuming stop and go that we have to do for projects. And I've only got five days to complete this project. So I've got a four by eight sheet of foam here. And I've already drawn on it my main line that I need to create the Dallas Divide photograph. On Dallas Divide, the curve, the train runs off into a curve. So this is perfect. My train comes at the camera, perfect run by. Rocky Mountains back here in the background. Because the mountains are in one spot, they don't follow you like the moon. Because the mountains are stationary and not parallel to the locomotive, I don't have to worry about panning. Once the camera starts panning in video, the whole effect can be ruined. So the way the mountains are gonna be set, it's simply gonna be a pan shot where you see the locomotive, the shot will open up, and then you'll see the Rocky Mountains as the engine does a run by. This is gonna be a good effect. But rather than just use a one inch or a one foot wide piece of foam, cut it out, scenic it, and do the video, because these engines can traverse 15 inch radiuses, this affords me the opportunity to make about a two foot wide diorama dog bone, which will allow the train to run into the scene, do its loop around, run through the scene again for the first or second or however many video takes that I need to do. Also, what I'm not sure about, and we're going to learn as this project goes along, is this backside. What will this backside afford me for videography and for photography potential? So we're both going to walk, we're all going to walk through this project together as I go through it step by step in the next five days. And let's just see how this project turns out. Makes my 15 inch radius and this shows that I've got enough foam on the edge here to add on to have that extra that I needed here. What we have to do now is just trace this line and cut this and glue them together. I always like to use great stuff to glue together my foam dioramas because it doesn't 
eat the foam like liquid nails does. So I'm just going to force this out and glue these two sections together. Just like that. Nothing will rise up, and this will be firm in no time. Now I'm going to start carving the topography. Everything's not quite glued down. I'm using the prototype photos as my examples again because that's the most important guide that we've got. And I can see that all I simply have to do is carve down about a, about a four-foot water runoff from the ballast line. So I'm using a, a pruning saw to cut my foam because this bends and this allows me to get in and cut the curvature of the main line right away that I need. contours. It's very sharp. It works really quick. Here's another tool I like. It's a bent horse rasp. I found this at the Woodsmith store. It's great for getting the water drainage gullies where you need that curvature to curve into the foam.
relatively quickly. paint inside the foams, cavities, get rid of all that pink color. So when I apply dirt to this, this black will be a good background for the dirt. This just about wraps this up where this is going to be just sealed just right so that the foam won't shrink or degrade quickly. It'll take a little more time. This is like text paint sealing it. Here we are, we've got the scene outside, the black paint, the dark brown paint just drying. The camera's angle is set up about where it's going to be for the filming. The dump truck represents the locomotive or about where the train's going to go. These mountains, these will not be the mountain used in the actual photo shoot. We'll, you, we'll, we'll match the location for those. But this gives me some reference on what I need to do a good pan shot. Now this scene is going to require a great deal of dirt. And I like to use fine Missouri sifted clay dirt on all the seams. And I get this year round underneath my back porch where it's dry. So when it's snowing out here or raining out here, I still got the ability to get dirt and sift it. Let me show you how I do that. I like to use a Stanley Sure Form loosen up this hard mound of Missouri clay that's underneath my back porch. And then what I do, I've got a box lined at the bottom with very fine plumber screen. And this is just wonderful for after you get a large amount of dirt together, I sift it and I let it drop into my final dirt container here. So what I do is I sit here, I'll scrape for 20 minutes and get a really large pile of dirt and then I'll sift it through here. And every time I'm doing this job, you can bet I'm always wearing a mask because this is, this is one of the nastiest model railroad jobs that I have got, that I've got to contend with. Literally is just sitting here shaving this dusty old dirt out, sifting it fine and then using it perfect for modules at that point, perfect for scenes. I sprayed on some hot stuff, some foam, to give the brake line here. So when I'm sitting here shooting this at a low angle, I won't see the rails on the back side of the return track for this shot. Now when that dries and after it's finished expanding, I'll shave it over just a little rounded and cover it up with a paint and then we'll put dirt on that. Okay, now let's talk about track. I'm using micro-engineering narrow gauge uh, track three foot gauge HO here. And I've spent the last two hours cutting the track and laying it around the whole diorama. I've just got this one foot section to go. I'm using Atlas and scale rail joiners uh, for this. And they, they just, they're small. They look, uh, they don't look as obtuse on this Code 55 rail. And then what I do is I solder them into place while they're straight. And then I bend the curve into the track after the joint's soldered. And then I'll go back and I'll replace the ties and then clean up the solder joint so it doesn't look uh, all sloppy and, and kind of nasty looking. So figure in about another 20 minutes, well, maybe after I drop the wire leads, maybe another half an hour I should have this thing up and running. And then I'm going to glue all this track down. So far the track's just floating, it's secured with pins, but I'm going to glue it down with a trowel, a small trowel, and just a little liquid nail, which won't hurt the foam now that the foam's been sealed with, with uh, paint. I want to get the wires from the track through the foam. What you do is you shove a piece of copper tubing into the foam, Here's where my wire leads are soldered onto the track. And I'll simply push this wire through the copper tubing that's now in the foam, which allows the wire to be thread right through the foam. I 
pull it out underneath. The wire is now inside the copper tube. So when I pull the tube out, the wire is now in the foam. Thread it through the bottom and rev it ready to be connected to track power. I'm gluing the track down using a, a metal spatula and liquid nail. What I do is I bring the liquid nail on the spatula right underneath the rails, right underneath the ties, follow the line, try to make it relatively smooth, but thick enough for it to stick to the track, for it to snuggle itself around the outside of those ties. Get everything you lay right down. Gluing it down like this works really well. Put a few weights on top, it won't pull out with the sun, and it'll stay glued down, and all the liquid nail will be covered up with ballast, so you won't see any of this, any of this, uh, peanut butter looking material. I've got all the track glued down. I hooked up the DCC system and lo and behold, I got it operating with sound. So tomorrow when the day breaks, I'll paint this track and we'll put dirt on the whole diorama and then we'll Put down the vegetation, the individual weeds, and this thing's going to be pretty much ready for the mountains to be built. What I'm doing now is I'm putting dirt on the scene, the sifted dirt. I'm running it through a screen that really helps spread it much faster than opposed to just trying to spread it with an open box like this. It's much smoother to break it up with a metal screen and run it along the whole scene. Now I'm going to cover this entire diorama with dirt like this, including the tracks, and I'll brush some of it off. And then we'll add just a little bit of rocky ballast and uh, other, other uh, uh, rougher type of terrain scenery to this, and then the vegetation. I'm using some finely screened gravel from a creek for the ballast. I didn't use very much ballast, I would say, that this would have, been, would have been just enough to substantiate the main line and hold the grade. Okay, I've applied the dirt. I've applied ballast, which is fine creek, sifted rock, just out of a creek. When I screen rock, I've got larger size rocks too. And right now what I'm using is I'm using that to spread out and put a few larger boulders in the area. And then I'm gonna convolute those larger boulders with some of the finer rocks until I get a, I get the look that's in the prototype photo that I'm trying to find, which is that rocky Colorado type of scenery, which this so far is coming out just the way I want it. I'm doing a quick once over with a little bit of light green and medium green coarse turf from Woodland Scenics, just to give you that arid vegetation look. What we'll do is we'll follow up with individual tuft grass after this has all been soaked with glue and dries. And we should have a pretty good looking type of Colorado scenery that should match that photo just right. Okay, this diorama, this scene's been textured. All the dirt's down, the ground foam's down, the area that represents the creek right here is, is represented. I'm going to soak this entire area now with this Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement. I'm probably actually going to end up using three of these bottles, possibly four, to wet this entire scene, put it in a nice fine spray misting bottle, and mist it on top of this dirt real smooth. Okay, I'm spraying on the Woodland Scenic Cement. Right now it's very high, very fine mist, and it's going to get very wet. Everything is going to get wet. And once this gets wet and soaked on good, I'm gonna put a nail in it. I'm gonna pull out the static grass gun. We'll see what happens next. What I'm doing now is I'm applying static grass. Static grass is as simple as turning on this device. It's got two D cell batteries in it. The static grass is in the chamber. Here's the ground clip and a nail. I stick this in the scene and everywhere the grass goes, it stands up. It's almost like magic. So this will give, right now I'm putting down like a dead grass, dead, burnt, dry type of grass. And I'm putting it down kind of everywhere. And it'll just look really well, like inadvertently scraped off. Some of the coloring that was on the rail, 
So I'm going to go back over it with a little microengineering rail darkener. And what that is, is an instant tarnisher. Upon touching the metal, it just, it'll turn black. So the scene has been drying now for about five hours. And the main line is clean. So I managed to get the locomotive to run real well on the track so far. Something else I want to talk about. In the last hour, I made a dam out of clay and stuck some pins in it and mixed 180 grams of Envirotex, clear, uh, you know, that clear bar top coating that we like to use for water. Now, I've been hitting it with a torch every so often to keep the air bubbles out of it. And what this represents here, this body of water, is the creek, or at least the curvature edge of the creek that runs along this trackage, which is plainly seen in the, in the prototype shot. So this is going to work out real well. I haven't got any leaks. And I'm going to hit this with a torch one more time. Okay, now let me show you how we get the air bubbles out. Simple torch. And you don't touch the flame to it. What happens is it's the gas on the edge of the flame. Just simply makes those air bubbles go away. Just like that. Okay, we've got the foreground scenery completely built. I've got the creek in, I've got the main line down. Now what I'm gonna do, I put the train in perspective so I could trace and draw the background mountains. So what I do to do that is I've got a, a stick with a magic marker on the end, and I stand back and I actually look at the drawing where I can stand back and prospectively see the whole overall, and I focus on every peak and every detail and simply replicate them with the stick. It makes for a rough line that I can go back and follow up on a little more detail. Now after these mountains get all painted black, I'm gonna take the jigsaw cut out the top, I'm going to carve down the relief of the valleys, and then I'm going to go over it with white. And white's going to represent the various patches of glaciers and snow, which should make this pop. It'll then make it look characteristic exactly of the location that I'm trying to represent. Now what I'm doing here, I'm using the prototype photo again. And I am carving out, literally giving some contour and relief to the mountains. So this should make out where each peak is, where the background peaks are. When this gets painted and covered with the white snow, it's going to pop together. But this is where you really pay your dues. This is not the easiest of work. All right, here we are all finished, ready to set up and shoot outside. My shot is going to be down something like this. Not sure, just in that area here. You've got all the pine trees right directly behind me in the shot. Here we are, shoot day. This is the most exciting part. Here's when it all comes together. 
We've got Dallas Divide set up with the creek. I've added a bunch of little bushes, little uh, to block the V of the mountains. Just different little things I didn't know until you get to the final setup. We need various view blocks just to trick the eye. The point of the shot, the point of this shot, the whole setup was to get about an 18 second video of the locomotive coming around the curve past the creek and through the scene. It starts out really tight with the locomotive and the pine trees, so that all you see is locomotive and pine trees for most of the clip. And then for the last five seconds, maybe three seconds, it opens up to a panorama, it pans over with the locomotive, and you see all the mountains just for a few seconds, long enough to know they're there, but not long enough to stare at them too long. So I think I've got my shot. This is actually post-shoot. Right now, it's we've already shot it. I've, I've probably done a seven or eight takes before I lost my son. I actually set up kind of late because this morning I just finished these mountains. So here we are flying by the seat of our pants, but I'm pretty sure we got the job done. Now I want to talk a little bit about what's behind the scenes. These are the things that I didn't necessarily show construction of during the video because these are props I've got on hand all the time. Because as a general rule, whenever you've got a background prop, You've always got secondary scenery in the foreground right before the main scenery, right where the camera's sitting, all right? In this case, what I've got is a bunch of trees, and this just absorbs clusters and confuses the eye as background footage as the train was pulling away. Not to convolute the scene, but all this greenery back here was actually to represent the growth of rolling hills in the foreground to the mountains, okay? Now, I cut and contoured everything. The reason I did that was it made it easy for me to understand where the snow pitches were and exactly what it was I was dealing with. I'm simply dealing with three valleys, three mountains that have eroded into valleys and are draining off. You can tell by the sun's shadow where the snow was. Copying the prototype picture worked out really well because it told me exactly where to put the paint. Similar to building a courtroom model in this case, I'm simply following the exact patterns from the photo to the mountains. And if you do that all the way across and stand back and look at it, it should match. And in this case, we're pretty darn close. So two sections, 16 feet long. We did the whole project in our five day deadline. And I'm gonna take an additional day tomorrow to shoot some still footage and maybe just see what other videos on this, this uh, wonderful uh, thing we've built here. This, this essentially was a layout. I mean, it's taken up no more space than a normal diorama with two double track main lines running through it. It's just in this case, because we can bend a 15 inch radius, it allowed me to make a return track. So I could sit here and film my run bys every time the train went by, rather than backing up, going forward, da 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 da. Or having somebody here running the throttle for me while I'm running the camera. This allowed me to be a one man show in this case, and I'm pretty sure it worked out well. For this special segment of What's Neat, I'm outside in this beautiful weather shooting an amazing Broadway Limited Chesapeake and Ohio K2 locomotive. This is an amazing model, one of the most beautiful models I've shot in a long time outside. This thing comes with Paragon 4 Sound, their latest premier sound system. It's an amazing looking locomotive. These locomotives are quickly recognized by the Alesco feed water heaters and flying pumps hanging from the smoke box door. All of these K2s came with 12,000 gallon tenders, but then the railroad quickly realized that they needed larger capacity, so they upped to 16,000 gallon tenders, and these models will be available with both different types of tenders. These things have synchronized pumping smoke, 
chuff sound, variable smoke intensity and timing. There's a lot of features packed into this little locomotive. It is a five pole can motor with skewed wound armatures, handcrafted brass boiler, cab, tender, heavy die cast chassis, increased tractive effort. I mean, this is an absolutely gorgeous model. Prototypical light operation with separately controlled headlights, number boards, cab lights factory installed engineers and figures. Many separately applied details such as handrails, grab irons, ladders, piping, glass cab, whistle, brass bell, marker, number boards. So many amazing details on this gorgeous, gorgeous K2 locomotive. So with that, I just wanted to share this, this amazing model. They're available now at your local hobby shops and check it out. This is just, I'm just, I'm just, I don't know what to say on this one. I'm blown away at the fidelity of this hybrid brass is what Broadway Limited calls this. And it is truly that. It is plastic brass in my opinion. And that is the segment for What's Neat. For this special segment of What's Neat, I've got Matt Stern from Bachman Industries, all the way from beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on the show today to tell us about some of the new exciting products that we're going to see here in the month of June. Matt, how are you today? I'm doing great, Ben. How are you? It's really good to have you on today. And you've got a lot of cool models I see on the side of you over there. Why don't you yeah. tell us about some of the amazing stuff for this month's video? All right, so we're going to start out with some uh, production samples uh, fresh from the factory. So uh, we got some uh, new GP40s here at HO scale. These are uh, new painted samples. These are uh, going to be DCC sound value models that will arrive later this year. We've got the uh, the Rio Grande scheme here. And then we've got the, uh, the late era New York Central scheme. And uh, this is a pretty cool one. This is one that uh, we haven't done before, so we're excited about that. Oh, that's going to be popular. And then we also have some new 282 Mikados. We have two over here you can see. Um, I've got one up here, which I'll bring a little bit closer to the camera. Um, this is uh, really a fantastic model. Um, I, I love the, the way the detail looks on this. Um, yes. I think this is going to be hugely popular. These are DCC ready um, with an NMRI 8-pin plug. And uh, they, they're just fantastic looking models. They have working lighting. They have metal drivers. And uh, this one here I particularly like because this is uh, based on a locomotive which actually ran in uh, excursion service uh, after the steam era. Very cool. And then uh, we, have, we also have some freight cars. We've got some new samples of our uh, upcoming drop-in gondolas. Got the uh, Rio Grande scheme here, and you can see the, uh, the drop-in here, which just drops down. Nice. And we've got the uh, classic Tuscan Red Pennsylvania as well. Those are nice. And with the drop-down end, you could put an idler flat car on either side and put a longer load of poles or something in that car with the drop-down ends. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the possibilities are endless. That is so true. We also have some new 40-foot boxcars. Uh, we've got this uh, prototypical one, which is the uh, this is the uh, the root of the 400 one. This is the CMO version. Yes. And uh, I think it's a really vibrant, nice paint scheme. Um, it'll look really good on any late steam era or early diesel era train. And then we also have uh, for our Christmas modelers this uh, very attractive North Pole ornament artisans car in a. Uh, very uh, shiny uh, silver scheme here, which will stand out on, on any Christmas layout. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, that'll reflect the Christmas lights. Absolutely. And just worth mentioning, both cars also have sliding opening doors. Okay, metal wheels too. And in end scale, um, we've got two new 50 foot track cleaning box cars to show you. Okay. Um, we've got the Great Northern in the uh, Glacier Green, which is my, one of my personal favorite paint schemes. Um, these will have these ones are just samples. So they don't have the track cleaning pads on them, but uh, the production models will have uh, track cleaning pads here. And what these do is they'll run around your layout, and it'll just clear your rails of any gunk, any dust, or anything that might have accumulated on it. And uh, it'll look like a functioning freight car at the same time. That is absolutely true. That's a great idea for end scale. And this is the uh, the second one. This is the uh, Canadian National. I'm going to show you this side first because this is how you would expect it to look. <laughs> okay. This, this is actually from a. Uh, a demonstration train that they ran in the 1970s, um, where they painted up several freight cars in uh, 
schemes demonstrating uh, industries in Canada. And uh, on the other side here, so what you'll see is they did one side of each car. Um, this one was uh, representing newspapers across Canada, and, and these are actually uh, the uh, the letterheads for uh, various newspapers across the country. And I have to give props to our uh, to Tyler, who you met last month, um, because he did a fantastic job uh, replicating this and getting it all ready for production. Because that's not an easy scheme to do. No, that would be that's amazing. That looks terrific. And that'll also complement our um, cylindrical hopper. The uh, the rainbow colored cylindrical hopper that we have was actually part of that same train. Matt, that's amazing. The hats off to Tyler on that job. Yes, absolutely. Um, back to HO scale here. Uh, we also have a sample of our uh, new full dome here. This is the uh, Western Maryland Scenic Railroad version. Yes. Oh my God, that's beautiful. And this was uh, the uh, Amtrak car, the last car uh, full dome that Amtrak had uh, when it retired with Amtrak. It was. Uh, sold to a private operator, which uh, then leased it to the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad. And uh, just like on the prototype, we uh, you can see the uh, you've got the uh, warning symbols and stuff. You've got the things for uh, like, the you know, the what to do in an emergency stuff. But right. We tried to recreate everything that the real car had. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. And uh, like you said, it's just a sharp scheme. Boy, if that railroad's got a gift shop on that train, they could sell those cars on that train. Well, that's what we hope. <laughs> that's cool. All right, so uh, just a couple more things. We're moving to large scale now. We have uh, two samples of our new closed streetcar. Uh, this is a model that we have made in the past, but this is going to be a new version with metal gears, which uh, is something that I know a lot of the large scale modelers have been hoping for. Yes. Um, we have the United Traction version here. And then uh, I really like this one. Um, this is our Christmas one, the North Pole Rapid Transit. And what I love about this is you've got all sorts of things that the more you look at the car, the more you see. So like down here, you've got its root, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> and it's on its way to Santa's workshop and Gingerbread Hall. And on the other side here, we got the, uh, the traction company slogan, which is, it's almost as fast as my sleigh. <laughs> it's perfect. That's a beautiful and, uh, piece. Just like the uh, previous one of these cars, these will come with uh, interior lighting and directional headlights as well. Dude, that just would be perfect around a Christmas tree or a, or a single track back and forth shelf layout on somebody's mantle or windowsill. How perfect Absolutely. is that? Great. Or even, even if you're brave enough to run your garden railroad out in the snow in the winter, it's perfect for that too. That is true. And that's a lot of fun to do, by the way. It, it absolutely <laughs> um, Now I'm going to move on to some models that actually are in stock now. Okay. Uh, these have been in stock for a couple months now. Uh, this is our East Broadtop HO scale um, passenger car line. Um, this is in standard gauge HO scale. Um, so if you've been on the East Broadtop or if you want a memento for the line, or if you just like that railroad and want to run it on your HO scale railroad, these are the cars for that. Nice. So we've, got the, uh, we've got the passenger car, the coach, um, we've got the combine car, and then we've also got a baggage car version as well. I've only got two here because I can only hold two at a time. No, the paint scheme's uh, nice. Paint scheme's very nice, yep. It's uh, replicating their uh, earlier scheme from, uh, I believe, from the early 1900s when they had the gold lettering. Um, but it's also very similar to the cars that are running there now and the, uh, the, the, the uh, new iteration of the uh, company that's running now. Very cool, Matt. And staying in the East Rock Top theme, we're going to jump scales here to ON30 for a second. We've got two new uh, USRA, or actually not USRA, but two new uh, outside brace um, two-bay hoppers. Okay. Um, these are uh, both East Broadtop cars. They're based on East Broadtop prototypes. We've got the uh, the uh, no logo lettering version. Okay. And then we've got the uh, iconic acorn symbol as well on this one. Very cool. With coal loads. With coal loads. Yep. Removable coal loads. Um, you've got the detail inside if you take them out. And uh, each car is actually uh, part of a two car set. So uh, these come these come in two in two car packs. Um, with two different road numbers, so it's uh, easier to build a longer train. Nice work, Matt. And I'm going to pivot back to HO scale again here, kind of darting all over the place scale-wise, but that's okay. Um, also, now this is our southern um, bay window caboose. This is uh, the latest paint scheme to arrive in this range. Um, we know a lot of people have been really excited about this one because Southern Railway was one of those railroads that had a ton of these. Yes. And uh, yeah, we, we, we've, we've had a lot of good reception for these and uh, they're here now and they're uh, shipping to dealers. And also in cabooses, we have our new streamlined caboose, the uh, offset 
uh, Cupola Caboose. This again is a, uh, these are new paint schemes for a Caboose that's been in the line already, but um, I'm particularly excited about this scheme because this is uh, actually the last scheme that these pro the prototype of these cars wore in reality in class one service. Okay. Um, they ran with the Burlington Northern up through the 1970s. And uh, as you can see, it's a really nice vibrant scheme. I love the yellow ends and uh, you got the silver roof. It, it'll just, it'll look sharp on any railroad. And uh, speaking of looking sharp, we've also got the Norfolk and Western Bicentennial version. Oh, beautiful. You gotta love that. Yes, gosh, that was so, that so many railroads did that around 1976. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and this car is uh, one we actually had some uh, requests for, so we're happy to deliver on that. That'll be great for the collectors too. Absolutely. And I think that might actually just about wrap it up. That's amazing. I mean, everything every month, it's amazing the volume of material that you guys are able to produce with the accuracy now that you're doing. Um, just amazing, guys, what you guys are doing up there in Philadelphia. Well, thanks, Ken. So, Matt, thank you so much for being on for this June video. And, guys, ladies and gentlemen, that is this segment for What's Neat. All of the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. And by Broadway Limited Imports the cutting edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at broadway-limited.com. Bachman Trains, now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com.